As I walk through the door, I sensed his presence, and I knew this was the place where love abides, for this is the temple. Jehovah God abides here and we are standing in his presence on holy ground we are standing on holy Standing 
On behalf of the family, just thank everyone for coming out today to show your support and love for this family. Uh, today we are, uh, we are sad, but uh, this is, this is going to be a celebration of life for Miss Brenda. We're, we're going to miss her greatly, uh, but uh, we do want to make sure we take this time to, to remember her, remember the good times, the pictures that uh, we got to see pre previously. And that, that was it's just a, a lot of joy and a lot of happiness, a lot of good times with the family. And saw she was very close to y'all and loved you very much. And uh, not something we have to tell you. She proved that and showed that to you every day. So we do pray for y'all, and uh, we know that she will be missed. And again, just thank you for all those that are supporting family during this time. Let's have a, a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, just knowing that we as, this family needs a touch from you, God. Lord, we have uh, burdens on our hearts, Lord, that just... Uh, we, we just lean on you, Lord, to, to gain a little understanding, a little, little help, a uh, little time of grieving, God. And, Lord, a time of, of, of uh, trying to, to find the, the good in the situation. But, Lord, the promise that we know that we can hang on and hold on to during this time is to know that Miss Brenda is with you, perfected in heaven. Lord, the pain doesn't uh, go away. We trust in you to help us in that. I pray for this family, God. I pray that this service will be something that will honor you most of all, but honor the life of Miss Brenda and encourage this family, God. Thank you for those that have taken out of their day to, to come and to visit and to stay for the service. May it be uh, an encouraging word and encouraging comfort to know that others are here to surround the family with love and support. Thank you, God, for this time we're going to have together. And may your name be praised in all we say and do today. In your name, amen. You will stand and join us and sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, page 334. Blessed assurance, this is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Of His Spirit washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect salvation, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above, angels of mercy, whispers of This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. My Savior all the day long. Perfect salvation, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. For this goodness lost in this this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. You may be seated.
like I said before, it is a great um, thing to be able to be surrounded by family and friends during a time like this. It is a, it is a sad occasion, but it's also an occasion of remembrance, an occasion that we can bond a little bit closer together. Um, sometimes it's difficult for families at times to bond. Sometimes things come up. But this is a time where we can come together under one accord and know that we need love, we need support, we need kind words, meaningful words, meaningful memories that we share with Ms. of Miss Brenda. There is many of those. And uh, they have a note here from the family. And it just says that we wish to thank each and every one of you being here today. Your acts of kindness have helped make these days of grief easier to bear. A special thanks to our Robert L. Church family and the Love Sunday School class who have volunteered to sit with her over the past few months and the caring staff of Richmond County Hospice and her Watson King and Richmond County Memorial Park family and her special friend and care caregiver, Linda Campbell. The family asks you please continue to keep them in your prayers as they move forward with hope of the, the hope of the resurrection and the great homecoming that awaits all of us who have trusted in Christ our Savior. And this is from the Dennis family. <clears throat> truly, truly a sad day, but a day again that we uh, remember all the truths that God gives us about dealing with things in life. You know, the Bible tells us that there are times of mourning, there are times of hardship. And it's not exactly a prayer that we pray just to knock these out of the way. We have to go through these things. And that's when we come together in Christ, to come together as family, and we grow, and we get stronger. Miss Brenda was a, a prime example of that in her life. She was an example of that in her work. Uh, it's always good to hear people... Uh, especially co-workers talk about the other co-worker and how much of a, a staple uh, person she was, a rock and someone that gave good in, instruction and direction in the workplace. And I could tell that. I could tell that. We, we met, went on some trips together as a church and uh, she would sit not too far behind me driving and I would get instruction while driving and i get instruction where we would go to eat and we, uh, when the Everybody would say, it doesn't matter. We, well, Miss Brenda, she would help us get straightened out there. We'd pick a good spot, too. And uh, we, had some, we had some really, really good times uh, doing those uh, events and things together. I know some days, uh, you know, she, she didn't, it was hard for her to get around, but she still came out, and she was uh, not just a, a quiet person sitting back there, but she was one that made us laugh and uh, we just enjoyed her company so much. And uh, whenever there was a moment or a chance to brag a little bit, not to get herself puffed up, but to brag and to say how great she, how much she loves her family, you know, she always talked about y'all. And it was, uh, it was always a smile on her face. And Pastor Billy, she was very, very proud of you and very proud of her grandkids and all the nieces and nephews. There was, uh, I don't think there was many conversations that we had that y'all weren't mentioned in some way, shape, or form. And uh, all your accomplishments and everything, she knew them very well, and she let us know. And uh, I just, I always got, um, I always uh, enjoyed our talks together. And knowing that she had a Sunday school class that would come together and be with her, I think that was a, a great uh, compliment to their relationship that they had with, uh, that she had with her church family. You know, that's something that is another example that we need to gain from this is we need good family. We need good friends to be able to join together. And we find that in a strong way in our church families. God is the one that brings us together in our church. It's not just because uh, we're glorified people because we enter a building. It's because we're joined by God. We're 
able to have some kind of happiness in this moment of sadness because we know that Miss Brenda made a confession of faith before God and asked God to come into her heart and be, be saved. And we know that, that that promise that he had given all of us that have said that is the same with her. And she now has a hope and that home is in heaven. She is perfected. And that is a, a thing that we need to do. She was one that would pray. If there was a, a problem, it was said that she would pray. Not only did we get to see that, but I, again, getting to hear that from other people as a testimony, that she would pray for you. Know that sometimes when maybe you may not even known it, she was one of those that she, she saw the need and she'd pray. And she had a son that would pray with her a lot. And that was also good. In the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, we have a set of scriptures here that is trying to, you know, point out some, some, some sorrows, some, some hardships. But as we get to verse 23, 22 and 23, it says, Through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. It doesn't say we're out of the fire. It doesn't say we're out of that, but it's not going to consume us. We're going to feel it. But because of his compassions, and they don't fail, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Family, there's not many words we can say that's going to bring the pain and sorrow to a stop. But a promise that we have in God's word is that he will make a new, a new day every day for you. Every day the Lord has given you. He's given you another chance. He's given you another blessing. And though it may not fix itself in a day or two, a week or a month, every day the Lord will be with you. If you trust in him and you let him lead you, and you let him comfort you, let your... He says, let our heart not be troubled, but we need to believe in God. Friends, I have found that that's the only comfort, really, that, that can actually do any good for a long period of time. And these, these days, these every days that he's promised to take care of us, that's every day you have here on earth. That's every day. That's not just for a moment. That's not just for a friend that got to be here for a couple hours or maybe stay in the night. Or maybe somebody that's here once in a while when you see him at work. God is with you every moment. And if you need that new day, he'll bless you with that new day. Just ask him and trust in him. I pray that God will just continue to be with you, family. And all of you, that he'll guide and direct you. And though today is hard, I hope tomorrow is better. And that you find that hope in him. Each and every day, grow stronger with the Lord. Stronger in that walk. Keep those memories alive. Have the, you're going to have those moments, but let God guide you through that, and you'll be blessed. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the memories that you give us of our loved ones, Lord. And the Lord, even though it's painful, Lord, I know that for our family here today, it is, it is trying. It is hard. But Lord, every day you promise a new day. You promise that you will be with us and walk with us through the, through the trials and tribulations, through the, the, through the storms of life, Lord, through the good times, through the profitable moments as well. But Lord, we rely on you to help and guide this family during this time. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that says you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. Thank you, God, for that promise. We ask these things in your name. Amen.
foundation, the root of David, Christ the Lord, our coming King. What a welcome and homecoming now awaits me, and I'm expecting any day to move right. take a moment to uh, thank the family for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this service, this celebration of life as we take a few moments to reflect over the life of Miss Brenda, but also rejoice over her eternal life. I'm so glad that this is not final. Uh, if this was final, we would have no hope today, but I'm thankful that the Bible teaches us to rather be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we can rejoice over the fact today that because, as Brother Jason said, she accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. Jesus said in John 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And she chose one day to go through Jesus. And because of that today, we can rejoice over that fact. So family, thank you for allowing me to have this privilege today. And um, for as long as I can remember, uh, over the years I've known Miss Brenda uh, from the uh, Daily Journal and the, and the grave, uh, working at the cemetery, and uh, just in, being in a small community, seeing her place to place, and uh, uh, seen her many times uh, here recently with, uh, uh, with Pastor Billy. And uh, it's just always a, a, a great time. Uh, she was so pleasant, so nice. Every time I, I met her and uh, it was an honor to know her. And, and uh, when Pastor Billy uh, first uh, came to Robert Dale as pastor, uh, my wife, uh, she began to tell me a lot about Pastor Billy and Miss Sandy. She said, they were my youth pastor at Faith Baptist when I was a teenager growing up. And she told me many stories. And, and uh, we became friends on Facebook over the years. And uh, probably a few years ago, a guy in my church gave me some uh, free tickets to uh, the Greensboro to an ACC basketball tournament. And uh, myself and Pastor Robbie, and I told Pastor Robbie, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask uh, Preacher Billy Dennis if he'd like to go with us just to kind of get to know him and fellowship. And, and he agreed, and we picked him up that morning and uh, went to Asheboro and did what Baptist preachers did. We stopped and ate breakfast at the IHOP. And, and uh, we get there to the Greensboro Coliseum to go in, and uh, I go in first and check through security and give him a ticket, go in, and, and uh, Pastor Robbie comes behind me. We get about probably from here to the back of the sanctuary, and I turn around and look, and there's some commotion going on at the security and I look back I said man what's going on Robbie said I don't know we need to go back I said I'm not going to jail for him I don't know him that good <laughs> so finally he I see the security point and they go back and he finally gets through I said man what are you doing he said I left my I left my knife in my front pocket <laughs> but as that day has went on our friendship and now as he serves as a chaplain with the sheriff's office and uh, getting to see him on a weekly uh, basis our friendship has grown and and uh, I'm, I'm so thankful that God allows people to cross in our life, that people that may just become acquaintances that now I consider a, a dear friend. And uh, as I was asked to have a part of this service in every funeral that I preach, I always try to narrow it down. I try not to wear the patience of the people. I try to narrow it down uh, to just one word to describe that person. And the, 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 everything I knew about Miss Brenda and, and uh, everything as I sat down with Preacher Billy and Sister Sandy the other day and we talked about uh, just different things in life and reminisced over different things. Uh, there was many things as he was talking that ran through my mind that, uh, that she, was, she was faithful. 
she was faithful to her, her family. She was faithful to her, uh, to her church and how she served on uh, committees at every church that she attended, Pine Grove and Carlos Creek Baptist and here at Robert Dale Baptist in the last few years and, and uh, how she was faithful to her job. And, uh, and as already mentioned, how did everyone that worked with her bragged about her worth ethics and, and, uh, and how she, Pastor Billy said, as long as he can remember, she had two or three jobs always. And uh, so I thought about the word faithful, but I just never could settle with that. And I, I thought about the word as a servant and uh, how Pastor Billy told me that she was always serving others, doing for others, making cakes for people and pies and uh, just making sure that people had uh, what they needed in life and oftentimes uh, just uh, going above and beyond. That was just the type of person that Miss Brenda was. But uh, uh, just the other day I stopped by the house and Preacher Billy said, there's a word that came to my mind when I thought about mom. He said the word sacrifice. So I, I want to just sum it up today. Yes, she's faithful. Yes, she's loving. Yes, yes, she could uh, be known as a servant. But I want us to remember Miss Brenda Dennis as one who sacrificed. She sacrificed for family. Though she would work two or three jobs uh, to, to sacrifice, to make sure that, uh, that Preacher Billy said, we always have what we needed uh, through, through school, through college. Mama always went above and beyond. But he said there was one thing that sticks out to remember, that no matter how hard she worked, she would sacrifice to make sure that she was there at sporting events or school events for for me and for my, my children and for her nieces and for uh, our, our nephews, our family. She was always sacrificing for someone else. And what a testimony to leave behind today that she was a person who sacrificed. Because truly, as we look at the life of Jesus, that's what he did for us. He sacrificed his life on a hill called Calvary that me and you may have life and life more abundantly. That we can, at a time like this, in a, uh, we can rejoice over the very fact that uh, Miss Brenda, is, it, it, she's alive more today than she's ever been, and she's in the presence of the Almighty God. I want to read a passage of Scripture and just give you a short sermon today out of the Psalms 116, verse number 15. The Bible says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. I had read this scripture for many years, and, and uh, it was just uh, a few years back, I took our seniors uh, on, on a trip, it was the changing of the leaves, and we rode up towards the mountains, and we were looking, and there was an elderly man that was sitting in the front seat of the van, and I was driving the van, and he looked over to me, and he said, Preacher, you know, why don't we say we're going to go look at the leaves die? I said, well, what do you mean, brother? He said, well, that's what's happening, they're dying, he said, and it was like the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him, I said, we're not coming to look at... The, the sadness of death, but we come to look at the beauty of change. And that's where we can rejoice at. And that's what I asked the question as I read this scripture, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I asked the question for many years, how can something be so precious in the sight of the Lord, but yet so painful for us? Death brings pain it, because of the separation, because of the, uh, of the hurt that comes. The, even the Bible speaks about that there's a, a sting when it comes to death. And, but yet, God says that it's precious in his sight. And as I thought about that and how we look at the changing of the leaves and we don't look at death, but we look at the beauty. And I want to just give you three quick things today on the reason that the Lord finds that death is precious when it comes to saints. Number one, I believe that the Lord sees the precious of death because he realizes fully that the saint has been healed. He realized fully that there will never be any more sickness in the body of a saint once they cross into their eternal life. For the last little while, uh, especially this past year, Miss Brenda, she has suffered with a disease of dementia. She's suffered with sickness to the point of coming to the end of her journey of life. She found herself bedridden and, and not able to remember a lot because sickness had overtaken her body. But I have good news today. The fact that we can rejoice over the very fact, the reason the Lord said it's precious in his sight is because she's no longer sick anymore. The, she, re, she gained victory. She didn't lose the battle with dementia. She gained victory through her Lord and Savior. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors through Christ. And she conquered dementia. As the world may see it as she lost her battle. But the fact is she won the battle. And today we can rejoice at the very fact. And yes, it's precious to know that Miss Brenda never suffered another day in her life. Thanks be unto God. Not only is it because the Lord says it's precious because she's healed. But it's precious because she's home. She had a house here in Trailwood. 
It was just a temporary house. Everything in this earth is temporary to us. But when she entered into the portals of heaven, the other morning at the hospice haven, she entered into her eternal home. There was a, a greetings there. It was a loved ones going on before her. But I, I believe that more than anything in this world, she wanted to see Jesus. She wanted to see the one who uh, gave her life eternally, the one who died in her place. And she, she made it home uh, uh, to her eternal home. I, I'm reminded of a, of a story I read some time back. There was a, a little boy, and I don't know about you, but uh, uh, oftentimes me raising two boys, they, they, children could come home from school with some interesting questions. There was a lady one day, she was uh, preparing a snack for her son, and he'd come home from kindergarten, and he looked and he said, Mom, can you explain death to me? She said, well, son, I'll have to think about that a little bit. You're only five years old. The best way I can describe it to you. Well, time went by, and the day passed. The next day, the son come home. He said, Mom, you never answered my question. Can you describe death to me? He said, well, son, the best way I can describe it is, you know how sometimes you'll go to Grandma and Papa's house, and you'll play, and you'll get dirty, and they'll clean you up, and you'll fall off to sleep, and me and your dad will come by, and your dad will just swoop you up in his arms, and the next thing you know, the next morning you wake up and you at home. He said, yes. She said, that's how death is. She said, we'll get tired in this whole world and we'll close our eyes in death. And our Heavenly Father will just come pick us up and we'll open our eyes in the presence of being home. We can rejoice at the fact it's precious she's been healed and she's been home. But number three, and I'll be done. I'll read a poem. It's precious in the sight of the Lord, not only because she's healed, not only because she's home, because she's happy today. She's happier today than she's ever been in her life. Life is hard. Miss Brenda had struggles in her life. She overcome things to, to be what she is, to, what she was, and to leave the testimony that she had of a one who sacrificed. And I can only imagine just a few days ago, we were at her house, myself and Pastor Robbie stopped by, and Preacher Billy greeted us at the door, and he said, It's not been a good day. She's not really responded much. And me and we made our way to her bedside. And she looked up at me and Preacher Robbie. And she looked at me and she looked at him. And a big old smile come on her face. And Preacher Billy said, that's the most I've seen out of her all day long. I said, listen, brother, when you look at this face and that face, you can't help but smile. <laughs> I later, we left. I told Preacher Robbie, I said, I think she looked at you and thought Jay Leno would come to see her. <laughs> No doubt today, family, you can rejoice over the fact she's been healed. You can rejoice over the promises of the Lord that she's home. You can rejoice over the fact today, though we may be sad, and though you're going to miss her, no doubt. You can rejoice over the fact, and you can be happy to know that death is just temporary. There's coming a reunion day. You'll get to see mom again. You'll get to see the mother-in-law again. You'll get to see grandma again. You'll get to see sister again. You'll get to see Anne again. You'll get to see friend again. I believe in the promises of the word of God. And that day is coming. I want to read a poem in closing. It's entitled, When Tomorrow Starts Without Me. When tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I have to leave behind all those I dearly love but when tomorrow starts without me, I don't feel so sad to be. For I feel so much at home now, for God is looking on me. Smile and hold me. He smiled and held me as he welcomed me home. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, just know I'll be right there in your heart. Family, we love you. We're praying for you. And if we can ever do anything for you, we're here for you. God bless you. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, we thank you for the words that these two preachers have brought forth today. We thank you for the words of the songs that have been sung here as well. But most of all, Father, we thank you for your word, the word of God. We know that in the word of God, there is help and there is healing and there is hope. And we know that as that word has been shared. 
that it is going to prosper unto where it was sent, and it's not going to come back void. Lord, we pray for this family now as we come to the end of this service. We know that many prayers have been lifted up, Lord, over these last few days, and what solace and what comfort they have found in just being alone with you and just pouring out their hearts. I'm so glad, God, that we can never exhaust prayer, that we can come to you as often, not just as we like, but as often as we need to. And so, Lord, as we pray this one last prayer in this service today, thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you have done. The invisible things that were done in this service will be made visible in due time. There will be fruit that will come forth from it, Lord. And we know that that fruit will abide and it will remain forever. May your watch care be over this family, Lord, as they travel back to their homes in various different places. And we just pray that every day you'll continue to fill their hearts with a peace of God that passeth all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The services will conclude at the Richmond County Memorial Park. At this time, we're going to ask everyone except the family, ask everyone if you would stand.